My name is Parth, and I'm a 12th grade student in Shanghai, Singapore International School. I had my first experience with virtual reality when I was in ninth grade, so around three years ago. I clearly remember I was in a mall with my family on Sunday afternoon, and I saw this VR Oculus Company sign on a little booth. So I, I knew what virtual reality was, but I had never tried it. So I decided to go ahead and try it. I lined up outside this booth, and within 10 minutes, uh, a volunteer came and put this headset on my head, and I played a horror game, a virtual reality horror game, for around five minutes. Now, apart from the fact that the game itself was incredibly scary in virtual reality, I was mesmerized by virtual reality technology. I was stunned. It was the first time in my life that I'd put something on my head and entered a completely new world. It was something that I'd never felt before. So the next day, uh, I went to school and you know, I asked my friends and a couple of my teachers whether they had tried VR technology. To my surprise, almost none of my friends and absolutely none of my teachers had ever tried a proper VR experience. And that really surprised me and it confused me because this technology was really cool. I mean, I, I did not know why it was not popular yet and why so few people had tried it. So that week I got myself this little cardboard VR headset, which is obviously not as good as the real ones, but overall, I still fell in love with the concept of virtual reality. I thought it was amazing that you could have a device that acts as a portal to any location in the world from the comfort of your room or your home. And so something inside me decided that I wanted to spend some time in my high school popularizing this technology, bringing it to the community around me. And for the last one and a half years, I've been trying to do just that. At my school, my friends and I started this virtual reality organization called BYOS, Build Your Own School. And recently, we became the first school in Shanghai to create a sophisticated VR tour of our campus. So here are a few photos. Uh, we rebuilt our entire buildings in virtual reality. We built the labs, we rebuilt every single room, uh, we rebuilt the library. Anything that you can find in that building, we rebuilt into a VR game. It took about a year, and uh, people, users could hold objects, they could open doors with their hands, they could use the elevator. So it was a sophisticated VR experience. We launched it last December to our school community in the hopes of popularizing and getting this idea of VR out there so that people start thinking about it. Now, for the last four months, I've also been an intern at HTC Vive, where I've been working with HTC to create VR content and VR lessons for schools in Hong Kong. And I've also been trying to connect HTC with international schools across Shanghai so that soon VR content will be found in more and more schools. Now, in the last one and a half years of working on all of this VR stuff, I've realized a set of things that have convinced me that VR might just be the most incredibly potent technology that we have ever encountered. Now, now that's a bold claim. And the reason why I think so can be explained using this Venn diagram. So as humans in our life, there's a bunch of things that we can do. You know, things like walking or sleeping or cooking or, you know, picking up a pencil. These are the usual daily things that humans can do. But there's also a huge circle of things that we humans cannot do. Things like standing on the sun surface or doing a nuclear experiment in your bedroom or flying, riding a dinosaur. We can't do these things. Now, where virtual reality comes in is that VR enables these two circles to converge into one big circle where absolutely everything is possible. Everything is possible. In VR, humans can visually experience anything at all. You can stand on the sun's surface, you can do a nuclear experiment, you can ride a dinosaur, and all of it feels real because of the 360 degrees view around us. And this is the incredible thing that makes VR so special. Now, being a student, I'm always interested in how something will benefit education, how it will benefit me as a student. And sure enough, VR does impact education. In fact, it transforms education, not just impact. It transforms education. And uh, a couple of great examples that I always like to give are, firstly, chemistry. 
Now, virtual reality chemistry is going to be a breakthrough. In essence, VR chemistry will allow every student in the world to have the best chem lab in the world. Now, again, that's a bold claim. And the reason I say that is because VR chem is free of certain limitations. VR chem offers infinite safety. Now, this is a big one because students can be free to explore anything they want because if they break something or if they hurt themselves or if there's an explosion that happens, it's all in software. Nothing is real. VR chem provides infinite resources. Again, this is software, so you cannot run out of software, right? You, it's infinite resources. You can use them as however much you want. And lastly, there's infinite space in a VR chem lab. You don't have to worry about space. It's, it's, a, it's software. Now, that's a lot of infinite stuff for a high school chemistry lab. And as long as coders can code chemical substances in VR that accurately reflect the real properties, VR chem is going to be a breakthrough. Another example I love giving is history. In history, unfortunately, there's always an essential element that's missing, which is the experience of that place itself that you're learning about. For example, ancient India or ancient Rome or ancient China. When you're learning about these things, you never really get to experience what it might have been like to be there. Videos and textbooks can only provide a certain extent of visualization. But virtual reality bridges this gap. Now here's an example of a coder who developed this ancient Rome atmosphere in virtual reality and you can see the Colosseum. Now students of history can just hop onto this experience and really feel what it must have been like to be a gladiator back in those days, standing in the middle of the stadium, surrounded by thousands of people. Also, developers can recreate major wars in history, and as a VR user, you can be, smack, uh, you can be standing smack in the middle of this war, looking all around you, people dying and killing each other, and it's all software. So this allows students to not just learn history, but it allows them to experience it. And if the graphics get good enough, this becomes indistinguishable from time travel. The experience becomes indistinguishable from time travel because you don't really know that you weren't there. In fact, there's a relationship in VR which goes something like this. As the graphics of a virtual reality experience improve, the ability to discern between virtuality and reality goes down. And it hits a point where we might not even know the difference at one point. And this is exactly why I love saying that VR is the grandmaster of deception. VR deceives humans into thinking that we're experiencing and looking at things that we're really not. That's what makes it so special. And soon enough, VR is going to build a world of deceptive content around itself, which is going to be known as the metaverse. Simply put, the metaverse is the internet of virtual reality things. It's the internet for VR. And Unlike the internet, which is just a collection of articles and links and videos, the metaverse is going to have a physical form. It's going to be a truly parallel, alternate universe. There's going to be roads, highways, buildings, cars, factories in the metaverse, all in the virtual world. And the millions of VR users across the world will all be logged into the same metaverse. You might be rich in the metaverse. You might be poor in the metaverse. You might own land. You might trade, uh, you might be a policeman in the metaverse while you're something else in the real world. This is really cool and it fascinates me every time I think about it. Now, some of you here might be thinking that, wow, I'm getting a little carried away with my imagination here, thinking of all this futuristic stuff and I agree. I definitely am getting a bit carried away. But something inside me tells me that in the next 20, 30 years or whenever the time comes, virtual reality will not fail us and eventually will provide the most exciting future that we humans could ever hope for. Thank you.